In the last movie, Hypothesis Test Part 1, we did a two-tailed test for the population mean when the population standard deviation was known. We wanted to know if the population mean amount of apple juice dispensed into all of the bottles was different from 64.05 ounces. After setting up our hypotheses, we ran z-tests on our TI-8384 calculator. Our test statistic was 3.13 standard errors below the hypothesized 64.05. The probability of getting a test statistic this far away or farther if the null hypothesis were true is only 0.18%. This is our p-value. This probability is so small that it's smaller than the significance level of 1%. So we rejected the null hypothesis and accepted the alternative. We did have sufficient evidence that the population mean was different from 64.05 ounces. Now, if it's not 64.05, then what is it? The hypothesis test only tells us that the population mean is most likely not 64.05 ounces. But what if you want to know what it is equal to? This is what a confidence interval is for. So let's follow up our hypothesis test with a 99% confidence interval for the population mean. We will be using Z interval on our TI-8384 calculator. Press the STAT key, then the right arrow key twice to highlight tests. Press 7 to select Z interval. Highlight stats and press enter if you need to. Hey, all the values for the standard deviation, mean, and sample size are already there. That will always happen if you always follow up a hypothesis test with a confidence interval. We only need to enter in our confidence level of 99%. So enter 0.99 for C level. Highlight calculate and then press enter. Now let's interpret this output. We are 99% confident that the population mean amount of apple juice being dispensed for all bottles in this production run is between 63.98 and 64.04 ounces. Is a hypothesized value of 64.05 ounces in this interval? No, that's why it was rejected by the hypothesis test. Our confidence interval agrees with our hypothesis test. The confidence interval shows all the values that would not get rejected in the hypothesis test. Did you notice how close our hypothesized value of 64.05 ounces is to this interval? Based on the evidence from our random sample, the true population mean might be just a little bit less, 64.04 ounces, or as low as 63.98 ounces. Now you have an idea of how far off it actually is. Suppose you want your confidence interval to be more narrow, in other words, smaller margin of error, or you want a higher level of confidence. In this situation, I think we're pretty happy with the 99%, but you might want a narrower interval. How can you get that? Increase the sample size. Use this formula to calculate how big it would need to be. For example, let's keep our confidence level at 99%, so our critical value 
would be 2.5758. Remember why? We need to go 2.5758 standard errors above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 99% of all possible sample means that we could possibly get. Let's say we want our margin of error E to be 0.015 ounce. And of course, we know that the population standard deviation is 0.06. Let's enter this into our calculator. Since this is a sample size problem, we always round up to meet or exceed the demands being made. We would need a sample size of 107. A sample this large scrunches in the sampling distribution so that the interval shrinks down to a margin of error of 0.015 ounce. And 99% of all the possible sample means that you could get will be in an interval of this size. This is a good review of sample size problems for you. Each time you do a hypothesis test, follow it up with a confidence interval so that you review all that you learned about confidence intervals. Then follow up with a sample size problem so that you review all that you learned about sample size problems. And review all that you learned about sampling distributions for they explain how the hypothesis tests, confidence intervals, and sample size problems work. Remember, if you can't explain how they work, you really don't know what you are doing. Yes, I'm being harsh again. Also, review what you need to know before you can calculate these probabilities. Reviewing all of this will prepare you for the final exam.